Revelation. Number one, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write his words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. You can see the descriptions of this man of God, John. He said, to the angel of the church, to the pastor of the church in Philadelphia, these are the true words of him, or Jesus Christ, the holy and the true and the one who has the key of David. Now I want you to see this claim of Jesus Christ, three claims of the risen Lord. It has a tremendous force to guarantee who he is in his personal character in relation to you and to me as a living church at Quaker Zeal. <laughs> three things claimed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, first, he is holy. Now now we're in this life that the word holy is given to the created beings and the past, into the present. Nowhere in all the founders of religions of the world that the word holy was ascribed or belonging to any person. Yes, we have the Pope called the Holy Father. But the title does not come from the mouth of God. Now when you claim for an office or title using your mouth for which you are, that is a false claim. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 says, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Now the whole earth is full of his glory was the song of the angels called the seraphims or the seraphs. Now the threefold holy is stressed God's holiness in the Old Testament. Now the title is given to the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Now the title holy to the Son of God gives us the proof that he shares the being and the person of God. So he is holy. Number two, he is true. Now we have all kinds of things that look like the same or identical of the original but not the real one. Now if you love watches, we have Rolex watches that come from China, some come from Hong Kong, others come from the Philippines in Mindanao. <laughs> Go to Sabuanga. So many Rolex there in Mindanao. Now, the problem is, inside that Rolex watches, which is a replica or, or imitation, as you can see, the me mechanism and the durability will only last for one year, and to your sadness, you'll see the changing of color after one year. Now, we have fake money in many countries of the world, whichever countries, they are creating some fake monies. We have fake passport, especially from the first people from the third world. And we have fake, uh, fake faces today, in today's time. <laughs> That's sad. So the meaning of the word true, as ascribed to God, means real. As opposite to which is unreal. Now there is no trace or shadow of darkness in the person of the Son of God. Even just a hint or just a small dot of darkness, it, it was foreign to him. It was foreign to God. He is true and he is real and he lives in the light. When you are in the presence of God, you see the absolute truth in him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The true personification of truth is Jesus Christ himself. The third thing, he has the key of David, key of David, the same Jesus Christ. He was the key of David. Now what does it mean to have the key of David, the king of Israel? Now the key, if you have the key for your house, is a symbol of a command or authority. Now, key is a symbol of authority. Jesus has the absolute authority that no one could question or no one could contest concerning his power. He has the power to open the door. He has the power, the power to shut the door. He has the power to remove the potentate or prime minister in a particular nation of the world. He has the power. He can replace it easy by any kind of intervention of God, either it is material thing or maybe some kind of a spiritual thing, he has the power to do it. And once he closed the door, no one 
in this planet could open. So John is bringing us to the personality of the church of Philippi. Now what kind of church is Philadelphia church? What is their strength? What is their positive attitude that the Son of God praises them? I love it. God, Jesus Christ praises them. Number one, Philadelphia is a church acted accordingly to the door of opportunity. Remember the meaning of the church? They are just a hallway, a, a, an opening to the plateau, opening to the Pregrian land, to the uh, Asia Minor, into other continent in the East. Now, the history of Philadelphia activity had been determined by its unique opportunity for missionary work. There had been given to it a door open before, before them. Now, now, the expression is strong. It is not merely... Uh, let's see the next word. I know you did say I have placed before you an open door. Take note of the word Philadelphia Church. I have set before you an open door no one can shut. I know that you have a little strength. I see that. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. In another translation, in the King James Version, I have set before you before the door. It is I have given you, in other words, the opportunity, a door which I have opened before thee. That's the connotation of that word. Now, this opportunity was a special gift, a special privilege, and favor bestowed upon Philadelphia. Nothing of the kind is mentioned in any other city. Now, let us see the full picture of the city and the church who was commissioned to do the missionary work. Now, the situation of the city fully explains the saying, Philadelphia lay up the upper extremity of the Long Valley, which opened back from the sea. After passing Philadelphia, the road along this valley ascends to Pergian land in the great central plateau, the main mass of Asia Minor. Now this road, this road was the one which led them from the harbor of Smyrna to the northeastern parts of Asia Minor in the east in general. Now Philadelphia, therefore, with this description in the history, was the keeper, take note of the word, of the gate way to the plateau. But now the door has been open, permanently open, before the church. And now the work of the Philadelphia believers had been to go forth through the door and carry the gospel to the cities of the Pergian land. Now I'll cite some application in this particular characteristic and the place of where they uh, they've been points of application of interest in this particular church door of opportunity is here the first let's each of us draw and learn in the life of this powerful church that the gateway for the missionary opportunity listen to this did not to go to overseas to find it. It is right in your neighborhood. It's right there beside you. It is right in your associations with the people wherever you go. It is right in your social gatherings or attending birthdays or anniversaries in any other celebration. If there's an opening for me, secular, I will attend. Religious, I will attend. Any opportunity, I must be there if I was invited. Now, the opportunity that had been given to you is to start working and then sharing what you have found, Jesus Christ, the Savior of your soul. You will not ask, where the Lord, where Lord I should start? That's not the question. It is within your home. I, I love what Anne is sharing today. The church of Columbus, all of us are believers, but they're starting a little church, miniature church, 
where Elmer is the pastor, Annie is the assistant pastor, two members of the congregation, the two kids. That's the start of the church. It started in your home. And then it started within your office or office mates. And then later on to the warehouse where you work, in factory workers or marketplaces. Or maybe coffee shops or more are the best places to find someone whom you can share what you have experienced. Now church, don't wait for Sunday and say, I think I would invite my friend to attend my church. Please. Thank God for the gathering that we are having here. Church is not the answer for people. The rituals and the songs that we're singing and the activities we have here on Sunday after Sunday. No, it won't bring them to the Lord. Those are means of worshiping God, but the real purpose of the church is not to gather only every Sunday for us to enjoy the Lord, but to reach the people with love. Maybe for the first time, or people will come here to share what you have, your hope and my hope. And then to teach them that faith in Jesus Christ means salvation of their soul. We don't need professional ministers to reach them. Those high degrees, forget that. But thank them anyway. You are the missionaries and workers of Jesus Christ. Ordinary people that shaped in Israel or Jerusalem were laymen, not the apostles, but laymen. They're scattered all over the world. Thank God for Apostle Paul and Peter, but Paul was the only one in Silas that went out from Jerusalem to the Gentile nation. So, open opportunities are privileges and responsibilities. God is counting on you now while the door is still open. So God is saying, church, of quicker seal, I am counting you. Number two, we can learn from the door that Jesus is the door. You can see it in, in, in John chapter 10, verse 9. Let me see it there. Thank you. More. There. Therefore, Jesus said again, Verily, I tr truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The problem and condition of the church goers in our materialistic world, generally speaking, is to live or blend to the Western culture. Take note of this. They, they want to blend to the Western culture or in some extent, through inherited tradition of the denominations they belong, that the word of the believers is to enjoy worship, hear the preaching of the word of God, give, and then have social fellowship with everyone. And then the church go downward farther, a little step downward farther, that the work of the ministry is the work of the employed pastor of the church, and he is the one who would make the church revive in a life. Many professing Christians are inclined to this passive attitude on the subject and feel as if they have nothing to do. They have employed a minister and paid him to feed them with instruction and comfort and now they have nothing to do but to sit and swallow the food he gives. They are to pay his salary and attend on his preaching and they think that he's doing a great deal. And he, on his part as the minister, is expected to preach good sermon, sound, comfortable doctrine to lift them up and make them feel comfortable. So they expect to go to heaven. I tell you, they will go to hell if this is the religion. That is not the way to heaven. The church is not passive and enjoy the preaching. The church is a living organism where each one can find a place to work and to do. So once we come to the door, which is Jesus Christ, we are members of the family of God. You know, in the earthly sphere, in the family sitting, there's what they call the body life ministry, where there's, uh, we call it, uh, division of labor. 